Hey, what's up, Media Makers? So in this video, we're going to be talking about an effect that comes with Premiere Pro and it comes with After Effects that has saved my life countless times. I couldn't even tell you how many times I've used this effect. It's called Warp Stabilizer. It takes shaky footage and makes it smooth as silk. Now, obviously, it can't be uh, terrible footage, you know, like the old saying, put crap in, get crap out. Um, there's nothing you can do to fix crappy footage. I'm going to show you how that works here in Premiere Pro. Like I said, you can do this in After Effects as well. Um, does pretty much the same thing, but we're going to be taking a look at it here in Premiere Pro. So I found some great clip examples that I actually I actually used Warp Stabilizer on these for the final edit. Um, so I thought this would be a great example to use. So let's take a look at this first original clip. This does not have Warp Stabilizer on it. So um, as you can see, I wanted to kind of get to this um, walking with them look. Um, however, w when you're doing weddings, and any wedding videographers out there know this, things are just kind of happening, and you don't always have control, you don't always have time, and I really wanted to get this shot. However, I did not have time to hook up my camera to a stabilizer. There just wasn't enough time to make that happen. So I did my best. I wanted to make sure that I did my absolute best to stay as stable as possible to make this process easier in post but as you can see even then there are definitely imperfections it doesn't look great well all I had to do was go over to my effects and I'm just gonna clear this so you just type in warp stabilizer and warp stabilizer comes up and I'm just gonna drag this on the clip the nice thing about this is it's analyzing in the background so it's analyzing um, all the information and all the movements going on so I can do anything I can uh, scale this up I can uh, repos reposition I can add other effects um, let's undo this here um, so it's doing all this in the background and as you can see we're stabilizing and it's done so for longer clips this is going to take a little bit of a longer time it, it's okay because you can actually work as this is happening it's not stopping you from being creative and getting your work done uh, let's just watch this here real quick so clearly so much more smooth this looks so much better um, so as you can see it's really as simple as that I just dragged on the warp stabilizer effect um, but if we scroll down you can see that there's a lot of different options here and we're gonna go over a lot of these so to illustrate th these other options the best I'm going to jump to another clip um, so I already have warp stabilizer set on here and I'm actually gonna turn it off so you can see without and let's look at this other clip so this is not a bad clip. I just wanted this to be totally steady, but again, I was on a monopod, um, so there's going to be slight imperfections um, as you wouldn't see on something like a tripod. Um, I really wanted this to be steady, and as you can see, especially by looking at the side of the screen here, um, the camera is moving just slightly. Well, I want this to have absolutely no motion. So if I turn on my warp stabilizer, I already have it added, but if you just wanna add it uh, to your clip, you go ahead and do that. Um, but as you can see on uh, result, that's uh, saving my project, hold on. As you can see on result, I have smooth motion. And that's normally what I want. I want this to be very smooth. But sometimes I want no motion. So if I just drop down and hit no motion, it actually makes this so it's not moving at all. So if we click this, or if we go ahead and play, you can see that this kind of looks like it's sitting on a tripod now. There's no motion, um, as you can see on this side of our screen here. Very cool. So we can just go from a smooth motion or no motion. So one thing that I do want to warn you about, and this is kind of what I was talking about when I said uh, put crap in, get crap out. If your footage is awful, it's so shaky, you can add warp stabilizer to it but it's not going to fix all your problems. You know, you're going to have a lot of this kind of warpy effect and you're not going to you're not going to want that. So as you can see, and this this clip I just pulled this as an example. This was never intended to go in the final wedding edit. Um, this was just me moving the camera, so it was kind of a shaky, um, shaky example. So this is kind of the shot, and this was me moving the camera. So not not a good clip. So if I were to turn on warp stabilizer, um, you can you'll see that this is very stable. It looks very stable, but there's this weird almost sickening warp effect to it um, that really makes this unpleasant to look at. Let's watch that again. So as you can see, you definitely notice it over here in this corner. Um, I don't know, it's, it's almost, it's uncomfortable to look at.
And the other weird part about this is you still have the motion blur um, as if this were really shaky. This is the really shaky part in the video, and you still have the motion blur even though um, you're not seeing the shakiness because of the warp stabilizer effect. So um, there's a lot of things going on here that just make this uncomfortable to watch, and it kind of makes you sick to your stomach when you watch it. But with that in mind, I do want to kind of look at the smoothness option here. Um, if you bring this down, it's not going to do as much. So if I just want like 10% smoothness, smoothness, by default it's 50. Um, but if we bring that down, it's not going to add so much warp to it. So it's not going to adjust the footage as much. Um, it will add a little bit of doctoring to your footage, but not a ton. Um, but you, know, you kind of have to play with it to see where that balance is. So this did help the original quite a bit and we're not getting that sickening look that we had at 50%. So that's kind of what I would go with if I had to use this clip, like if this was a first kiss or something and I had no choice, like this has to go in, um, then this is probably what I would do. I would play around with the smoothness here. So let's go back to the first clip. What I want to talk about now is the different kinds of methods that the warp stabilizer effect uses um, to get that um, stable effect. So by default, this is on subspace warp. So we also have a bunch of different options, and these are kind of layered in the amount of detail and doctoring that um, it is doing to your clip. So if we start with the beginning, and I just hit position. Well, first of all, if I go back to subspace and I turn this off, you can see that there's a lot of cropping happening. Well, the reason that that's happening is because it's pulling the outside space of our original video and kind of warping it outside of our frame, so where you don't see that. So it's pulling this side, pulling this side, pulling this side, and giving you that warp, but you don't see it because it's happening outside of our frame. So with that in mind, if we change this to position, all this is doing, it's not giving us as much of a crop, but all this is doing is moving our frame up, down, left, and right um, to try to do the best to get a stable effect. So, um, as you can see, it is stabilizing it a little bit, but um, not very much. It's just giving us a difference in position on our frame. So, if we change this to position, scale, and rotation, it's doing all three of those things. So we do get a little bit more of a uh, smooth effect. So if we drop down and give a perspective, you can see that it even ups the um, smoothness even a little bit more. And what's happening there is it's kind of balancing out the small slight um, rotations of my camera. So if I turn this off, you can see um, that my camera is kind of panning left and right just slightly, and that's just due to me walking. Like There was nothing that I could do about that. That's just natural. But one thing I want to point out is if we watch this, you can see these kind of sun flare, almost like there was dirt on the lens, and you can see that going back and forth, and that shows you that the camera actually was panning back and forth because you can see that flare going back and forth. However, the video itself is not, so this perspective is kind of doing this balancing act. Like, if I turn my camera left just slightly, um, it the software is making it so um, it looks like I'm turning my camera right just slightly and kind of balancing those two things out. Now, the most detailed is the default here in subspace warp. So that is actually warping the footage to make it as smooth as possible. And also, if you want to learn more about the lens that you should use to make sure that this effect works the absolute best that it can, go ahead and click that link up in the top right-hand corner of your screen on the card, um, because I talk a lot about that lens and the best lens for doing this kind of thing. And we actually go over doing a uh, warp stabilizer effect in that video. If you like this video and you got something out of it, go ahead and hit that like button. And if you're new here, please hit that subscribe button. Thank you so much for watching this video. And I want to give you a small reminder to go ahead and create something today. It doesn't have to be a masterpiece. It doesn't have to be your best piece of work. But please, just go ahead and practice. Go ahead and create something today. With that in mind, I will see you guys in the next video.